Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in again with me. My name is Victoria. If you are liking my content, don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up to support me. Uh, today's topic is my CASPA stats. CASPA is the application for a PA school. Just as a disclaimer to start, comparing yourself is one of the roots of evil. Do not compare yourself to everybody bit for bit and especially during this process, I fell victim to it. Aimlessly scroll on Instagram, looking up, okay, I need to find out what the statistics are. Like I need to figure out where I fit in with all of this. Using it as a sole purpose to kind of gauge where you are and to see how competitive you are, that's okay. But incessantly looking at other people's stats and comparing yourself and thinking you're not good enough, that's where you draw the line and you say, no, you are unique you have your own special journey. And at the end of the day, what really matters is how well-rounded of an applicant you are. So something that could be your strength could be my weakness, but something that could be my strength could be your weakness. So it really just matters how like the culmination of your entire application fits into their ideal class of students. So for your CASPA stats, try not to compare to mine, okay? and just use this solely as a tool to gauge your competitiveness. Use myself as another resource for you. My hope is that sharing my stats help and encourage you as a pre-PA student, or if you are already in PA school and you're just curious to see what my stats were, that's awesome, and thank you very much for tuning in. I went to the University of Rhode Island, and I studied kinesiology, which is exercise science, with a pre-health track focus. It wasn't a declared minor, or major, but it was just kinesiology on a different route. I took specific classes such as microbiology and genetics that weren't necessarily included in the kinesiology curriculum. I met with the pre-health advisor who really helped me and also laid out recommended courses and required courses for PA school. My cumulative GPA was a 3.83. My science GPA was a 3.67, and I was able to actually use a BCP calculator, which is bio, chem, and physics. It was a very useful resource for me to see my science GPA before CASPA calculated it, because CASPA calculates a plethora of different GPAs, like your last 90 credits. I had about 1,600 hours of patient care experience. This is direct patient care. I worked as an EMT basic and as a medical assistant in a primary care office. I was able to gain up to 2,300 hours, so 2,300 hours with my medical assisting job in the primary care office, but that was at the time of my interview. So at the time of my application, it was 1,600. When I had my interview in October, my patient care experience went up to 2,300 hours. So it depends on the school if they accept the hours at the time of your interview or if they cut off the hours at the time of your application. Some schools I would have only 1600 at the time of my application and other schools I would have 2300 which is over 2000 which is generally like the minimum. My healthcare experience was a little under 500 hours so this included uh, work in the field that didn't count as direct patient care and this was my internship at cardiac rehab where I took blood pressures on people that were exercising and I was able to work with exercise physiologists I learned so much valuable information and just about people skills also my internship for my senior year of my kinesiology major so it helped combine my studies with medicine in the field. I also worked as a medical assistant in a clinic for those applying for social security disability. That was per diem, it was maybe one time a month, sometimes two times a month. Shadowing hours, I have a little under 100. I got 90 shadowing hours and I started out in a hospital shadowing physical therapists and I applied for their shadow program in general, which then I made connections and was able to get in touch with the PA in charge of the PA shadow program. So I kind of worked my way up in a hospital setting. You don't necessarily have to do that, but I was able to, to make a connection with a PA in the emergency room and he allowed me to shadow him 
multiple times after that. He was an excellent resource. I know there's a lot of virtual shadowing going around with COVID now, so look into plenty of opportunities on Instagram, and I'm sure that you'll find something. For my volunteering hours, I had a little over 200. I had about 228 hours and I had a lot of opportunities stemming from being in a sorority. I helped out with blood drives, which were very fun and rewarding. I was also volunteering in the emergency department at two different hospitals. I was also involved in a two day long service project in Hawaii where I helped beach participants get into the water and use the ocean as therapy for veterans that were affected by their service. That was an extremely rewarding experience. I met some really awesome people and I did it in Hawaii in January where it was like 80 degrees. So nothing beats that. It was the bulk of my volunteering. I also did beach cleanups for my sorority as well. We had a lot of events. On the GRE, I got a 300, which is kind of the minimum that you want to get. However, I didn't want to take it again, so I only took it once and I still got accepted to VA school. I got a 151 on the qualitative and a 149 on the quantitative and a 4.5 on the writing. My scoring based on percentile was 50th percentile for the verbal section, 37th percentile for the quantitative, which is the math section, definitely my weak point, and writing was the 80th percentile, which was my strong suit. I made previous videos on how I studied for the GRE, so if you want to check that out. I also have a post on my Instagram for free GRE resources, so you don't have to break the bank on studying for the GRE with a prep course. Check out my Instagram at fitchickvic underscore future PA. For my leadership hours, I had 796 hours. I did numerous things at my undergrad. I was actually a Panhellenic delegate for my sorority, and that was essentially the interface between my sorority and other sororities and other Greek life organizations. I was an undergraduate teaching assistant for anatomy, which I absolutely loved. I was also a tutor in the Academic Enhancement Center, which was a specific building set just for tutoring. And I was in the biology cohort, so I got to tutor biology, anatomy, physiology, nutrition, and I led these like little study groups. I submitted four letters of recommendation, so the range that you want to be in is three to five letters of recs. I also had backups too, so I do recommend that. My first letter of rec was from my kinesiology advisor. So she was a kinesiology professor and she was also my advisor. I knew her for about four and a half years, so we had an established relationship. My second letter of rec writer was the emergency medicine PA that I was able to connect with in one of the shadowing programs and I shadowed him the most out of all other PAs that I shadowed. I knew him for about one to two years. Another person that wrote me a letter of recommendation was my EMT instructor and he was also, he also hired me back to teach further EMT classes. He is a paramedic and I've known him for a little over four years. So that was a very long relationship that we had. I knew I could trust him. He's written many letter of recommendations. The last letter of recommendation writer I had was a nurse practitioner. I was her medical assistant at this clinic and we worked very closely together and we developed a really great relationship even though I was working per diem. We'd known each other about eight months, but I definitely knew that she would write me a strong letter of recommendation, so I asked her. And lastly, I took the Casper exam, which is pretty much a situational judgment-based test, and it was actually kind of fun. I didn't expect to enjoy the test. Make sure you know which exams you have to take. Casper was required for two of my five schools. It wasn't bad, it was about $40 because you have to send it to your schools. So make sure you know which schools require it and which schools that you're sending it to. That is it for today's video on my Casper stats. Feel free to DM me on my Instagram if you have any questions at fitchickvic underscore future PA. And let me know what topics that you wanna see next.